This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. me hearties and welcome once again to another fantastic episode of Full Stream Ahead. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me as always is my skinny rich friend. It's Maz. Hey Maz, welcome back tonight. Tonight we are discussing Falcon and Winter Soldier. New World Order, Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, director is Kerry Stogland. Writers are Malcolm Spellman. Malcolm Spellman gets our created by credit for this episode. Um, and, of course, uh, Gene Colon gets our... Oh, oh, Gene Colon was, gets our created by for the Falcon. Sam Wilson, the Falcon. Jack Kirby gets, uh, of course... Uh, Bucky Barnes and Captain America created by... Ooh, they're cutting Joe Simon out on that one. Yeah, man. Ah. Oh, no, there he is. He's he's, he's actually after Stan Lee. Okay, so it goes Jack Kirby. Stan Lee also gets credit on uh, Sam Wilson, the Falcon. And then Joe Simon gets the Bucky Barnes, Captain America. Oh, I see. See, they're listing the artists first, Gene Colan and Jack Kirby, then the writers, Stan and Joe. And then, of course, Mal- Malcolm Spellman is our head writer for this series. Uh, Steve Epting and Ed Brubaker created the Winter Soldier character, though, obviously, that's Bucky Barnes. So <laughs> it's an interesting question how you divvy up those those details. We get n- none of the actual, like, you know, usual writing credits on this. But, you know, they usually hold those off a bit on the first episode. Of course, Wyatt Russell is, we see at the very end, as our John Walker, uh, Sebastian Stan is Bucky Barnes slash the Winter Soldier. Anthony Mackie is Sam Wilson Falcon. Don Cheadle is James Rhodes, War Machine. Um, Joaquin Torres is Denny Ramirez. And George Saint Pierre is George Baccarat. Baccarat. So we got a full full house here, my friend. Um, I'm glad that wasn't spoiled for me when I heard the show was around. I was like, it has something to do with Captain America. Man, I hope we get some more GSP in there. And right away, and I was like, yes, GSP's back. And then I was like, oh my god, they just blew him up. And I was like, well, no, of course he's the one that was uh, the one yeah. that got away. I was like, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so he's yeah, gonna be no, around for a while, away. and I'm super excited about that. Oh no, no, you're not gonna kill Batroc. Batroc. Yeah, here's the thing: they have given such love to Batroc in the comics of late. I think people want uh, George Champier to stay around. George Champier definitely wants to stay around. He says, I really want to do more. I'm telling yeah, you, I'm yeah. telling you, George, come in one day with the mustache. Oh, I thought I would try it, see what people thought. Maybe it looks good. Huh? And uh, they'll find work for you, my friend. They'll find work for you. Um, <laughs> my tip to you. Uh, but, yeah, it was uh, – so – and, you know, this is – so, okay. So we got to we gotta talk. You know, everyone says, oh – or we're going to get Cap's funeral in this because we see, you know, Falcon, he's in a dark suit. He's got the shield. Is this a da-da-da? No, that's not what that is. But that is the misdirect you get. And then after the first scene where you see that, we jump right to Sam working with the Air Force. He is basically doing private contract. Basically, he's a soldier for hire. He is, you know, a private contractor soldier. Um... Uh, working for the U.S. government, basically doing things that the U.S. government really can't be seen doing. Right. And, and it was my understanding that contractors were paid r- pretty well, especially mm-hmm. for the kind of contract work that he's doing. Um, well, and that is the thing, is he does, 
And we get to that. When we get to what is like, probably- isn't there twelve trillion dollars missing from the Pentagon exactly to pay for this kind of thing? Well, I don't know if it's missing. It's just no, no, but, but, no, no. It's missing from the budget. It's missing from you know being allocated and being accounted for. In that uh, sense, it's missing, but it's being uh, applied in in uses that you know generally for the yes. most part I think I support. But it's these kind of things. So you know, I, I imagine these people must be paid really well. Yeah. Well, they they are paid. Well, and okay, so there's a couple of levels on all of this. Right. There is what, and, and yes, contractors do get paid well. They do get paid better Should, than the military. Shouldn't the contractors have been, you know, uh, yeah. reasonably compensated for, uh, 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 what was it again? Uh, oh, that's right, saving the world. A couple of times, yes. Although, arguably, from problems they also cause. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a domino it's, effect, and it, you know, if you want to take it far well, back enough, all I know is that we wouldn't be here were it not for yeah. them. Well, here's what I will say. Um, and, I mean, this goes into the basically when you get to that loan scene, there's a lot to unpack there. Hmm. I don't want to jump. I mean, and obviously, it is like I said, never before in the history of comics has been applying for a small business loan made. So well, I mean, it's just like this thing where you are you are part of this story, and you you want that small business loan scene in there. It's like, oh, they're gonna go talk numbers and be in a no. You want? I want to see Sam Wilson go to the bank. I want to see him produce his records for the past five years. What I was blipped? I don't have records. Like, yeah, I know that's kind of the problem. Lots of people had it, and here's the thing. And okay, so let's let's jump to the meaty, meaty part of the issue here. Sam's sister, who has been keeping the family business literally afloat, because they're apparently uh, fishermen, um, for the last five years, um, with basically you know duct tape and 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 and, and hope, uh, has finally reached the end of it. She can't leverage anything. She has to sell stuff in order to not lose the house. And that means really selling the business because, you know, she can probably work as a fisher on someone else's boat, but maintaining a boat that doesn't run doesn't make any sense um, after they've spent all this money just to keep it running in a world where, as we've said, you know, for five years, demand dropped. So suddenly there was a surplus of everything, and then once that surplus was gone, you got to that point where, okay, we can maintain. But then suddenly demand rose suddenly, but you don't have the infrastructure to care for it, which actually means that the people that can achieve in that environment becomes the Roxans and these major corporations with their fingers in every pie that are going to... Uh, build out and achieve in that moment because they're the only ones that can ramp up that fast and all these little moms and pops that we're doing for the smaller market are getting swamped especially when they can't you know get the funds to 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 fix the boat and look for other kind other business models that they can then move into that aren't as lucrative for a rock sand but would be lucrative for them um but at the same time you have this problem that, you know, every half the world just came back. Half the world is stuck without a lot of things. I mean, arguably, you could say, well, hey, you have five years of interest on whatever bank account you had. But first off, that's usually not that much. And, you know, it's not, you know, unless you had, you know, 50 grand in the bank when you blipped, you're probably still kind of in a bad spot. Right, but and that's not a good look for a bank to be like a, a blip profiteer, you know? Yeah, uh, but well, more to the point, and this is actually where being Avenger, an Avenger actually hurts Falcon even more. Because, yes, he has government contracts. He is making money. <laughs> but strike one, he was one of the blipped. Strike two, even if he hadn't been blipped, he is in a high-risk profession that is going to very likely get killed. And, you know, while 
now here's the thing. Here's what I'll tell you. Had he actually been taking up the mantle of Captain America, maybe there might have been more to it. But then again, I don't think, aside from Cap saying be Captain America, I don't think anyone else was there giving – like Cap gave him a shield. Right, and and the establishment seemed sort of upset about that. They sort of didn't want him to take up the mantle, and they wanted to give it to their own guy, and they were really glad when he turned his shield in. Like, yes. oh, now we don't have to put out an arrest warrant. Thank you for returning our property that you – we're just going to say you were holding it. That's the, well, the, the know, they, feeling well, I they, got. They trick him into giving it to the Smithsonian. Right. Because when, but to be fair, he wasn't using it. Right, right. And that but, was the thing. They didn't want to go and take it from him. Right. Because obviously, well, that's what Cap wanted, and you know, you don't want him on his moon base, um, yeah. <laughs> looking down on you and saying, "That's not what I said to do with my shield," you know, that's Sam's shield. So, um, what is interesting about the 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 idea and the story as a whole is, and this is why I love the bank loan scene because yes, he was out for five years. Avengers don't make a salary. Which is something, and that's, this is that, that's my point. Shouldn't they be? Aren't they contractors? Like, um, well, and what is so? Here is so, and I'm going to give you the actual answer to how that works. First off, the Avengers aren't contractors, but they probably had room, board, and living expenses provided by whatever group they were working with. In the same way that you know, because this was actually this thing with um. When Spider-Man first tries to join the Fantastic Four, and I think that's an amazing, I think that's an amazing Spider-Man number one. Um, or actually, I think it's technically Amazing Spider-Man number fifteen because they continued the Amazing Fantasy story from fourteen to fifteen, if I'm remembering correctly. And this is so he gets his origin in Amazing Fantasy, and then his first adventure is in Amazing Spider-Man, and he goes to the Fantastic Four to try and join them and he makes this point. It's like I think, you know, because of my skills, I should get the top salary. You know, I should you know I'm I'm worth of your whatever your best salary is. And then basically, you know, the thing says, what do you think this is? General Motors? We don't get paid a salary. You know, we live here and we work here. And we we we're we're scientists and we're adventurers. We're not we're not putting widgets on uh lug nuts. It, you know, is basically his his point of view. Now, in the great what if, what if Spider-Man had joined the Fantastic Four, you know, Reed says, well, you know what, Ben, I've actually been thinking, maybe we, I should give you guys more money uh, for beyond our living expenses, because quite frankly, we do make money at this deal. And that's the thing, because obviously Stark was licensing all of the heroes. You do see that in, again, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where there is a massive toy line. Of all of the Avengers, you see the Hulk and the Cap toys and all these things. So obviously and, and someone was profiting it, off of this. Right. And wouldn't it be a good idea to make sure your heroes are well provided for so that they are never they never fall prey to temptation because well, they're gonna be in contact with and, and you wanna make sure that they're not in any desperate situation. And so here's you, the thing. I would wager that they probably largely were when they were on compound. I think that when they wanted to send out for tacos, no one said, no, yeah, yeah, just expensive, get tacos, do what you need. You needed cash, you know, we'll, we'll make it work, we'll do what we have to do. But remember that Falcon went rogue. So first Falcon went rogue, which means he cut himself off from that big Stark money. Then he comes back just as Stark snaps and, you know, mm -hmm. our condolences do you still get paid for that? And it's like, well, you know, maybe not so much. Maybe we don't have an Avengers Foundation at the moment, you know, or there's not a government contract with the Avengers for this because we do know that General, that Thunderbolt Ross, who was Secretary of State, maybe is the president now, we don't know, has basically, you know, basically sees the rebel Avengers as persona non grata. You know, so there's the real possibility that, you know, a lot of these guys are going to find themselves on the wrong side of of, of whatever government heat there might be. Hmm. You know, essentially, from the government's point of view, they do not 
want Sam Wilson for a lot of reasons, but one of which is that, you know, when we did ask you to j just sign this piece of paper to say that you're going to work within our laws and our agreements, that you were going to be cool with that, you said no. And when you say no, it's like, well, okay, you don't want to sign the paper. We can't really be working with you. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, and it's, you know, and you, you know, that's sort of this, you know, if you ever work in a hospital, they will tell you, you know, if you don't do this thing, if you don't get the shot, you can't work on the floor. If you don't, or, or if you don't have a reason to it, to, to get this and do not take these precautions that we've set for you, you can't work on the floor. You need, you need this paperwork in order to work on the floor. That is literally how, how, most organizations work in these kinds of situations. And, you know, for what it's worth, superheroes don't have a union yet, you know. There is not the, there is not the first, first United Brotherhood of superhumans um, in the Marvel Universe, although maybe there should be. Or a Vought. Yes. Well, see, now Vought, and again, I will wager to you that Vought doesn't, well, actually, no. They do seem to pay them. They do seem to pay them. They, right. they have license because they have because they're kicking back on the licensing agreements. So Vought's handing the licensing agreements. Vought's taking money on it and giving them, you know, and even if it's ten percent, you know, but ten percent of this. But then, of yeah. course, if Vought's the one and negotiating from the movies and whatnot, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, I don't know if Stark was doing that because Stark was probably doing it on, on some level that there was probably some licensing agreements they did. But not enough. And for what it's worth, it's a situation where if those toys, like if you, if a Hulk toy can't be copywritten because the Hulk is a public figure, there's an argument that says that anyone can make a Hulk toy in the same way that you could make like a Richard Nixon toy um, without having to pay Richard Nixon a royalty to make a Richard Nixon toy. Okay, I'm I'm reminded of of um, a documentary I watched on Metallica, and when they replaced uh, Jason Newstead, right, um, with Robert Trujillo, the new bass player. So when Robert Trujillo joined the band, the first thing they did was when they told him they got the job, he's like, "Here's a million dollars." Now you're part of Metallica. Now your life is going to be different. But here's a million dollars to get you started. I imagine something like that was was happening with every new Avenger. Like when he signed on Spider-Man, he said, hey, here's a million dollars. You know, now you're an Avenger. Uh, everything is cool. You don't have anything to worry about. Now you can just focus on being an Avenger. No? Except, no, because for what it's worth, first off, as Tony Stark would say, you don't, you don't, you don't get to be a billionaire by giving a million dollars to everybody. Um, you know, he's basically going to, you know, these, 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 these Iron Man suits don't build themselves. I know, and, but, but he's, he, he's selling, you know, uh, baby killing, you know, weapons of mass destruction. Not anymore. Okay. Now he's selling spark forge, which is actually even more lucrative. So, <laughs> Wait, he's all right. You know, it's yeah. like a million dollars here and there for like, what, 50 Avengers, $50 yeah, million dollars a year. I mean, that's it, nothing. No, it's nothing, but at the same time, you don't want it to be all about the money, after all. No, I understand that, but, but, you know, but, you know, but you don't want, like, you know, uh, yeah. a Hawkeye being tempted because he can't pay for his, you know, daughter's surgery or something. Oh, well, yeah, but, but, that, but that's where... But that's where break bad because his sister can't keep a, a rinky-dink boat afloat. But that is where... And that is where if, if he had stayed with the company... But yeah, and point, with, but but to with, that with point, like, you know, it's and like, I Stark imagine was Stark was taking care of his people because I yeah. imagine he had enough foresight to to see things like that. Yeah, and but that's the thing. But that is but that is literally the thing. It's like, had he stayed with the company, yeah, maybe he wouldn't be in this situation. I I know I, I I I dig you it, know? but but for for those that did, I imagine Stark was doing some sort of thing. Well, you know, as one can point out, you know, Vision sided with Stark. Vision bought a house. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Do you know? So let's let's call a shelter half an entrenching tool. Vision, vision, you know. Yeah. Vision got a house. Vision yeah. doesn't even have a birth certificate. He got a house. <laughs> now, granted, he does have a great British accent. Indeed. And he does make himself white when he does put on his human face. So right, right, that's right, the right. other aspect of this story that is ingrained within it. Um, my favorite thing we see in this. Well, not one of my. Well, the, what, let's show my favorite Easter egg. 
in this is when Bucky has his nightmare, which he does not admit is a nightmare, but I'm sure it was. Because you don't remember the time you murdered that innocent person and not say that's a nightmare. Yeah, I wonder if if, uh, the way he justifies that statement in his mind is that if this really happened, it is not a nightmare, it is just a memory. Like a nightmare would have been an imagined horrible thing. If this is something yes. that really happened, it's not really a nightmare. It's just a memory resurfacing. So he can feel like he's not lying to her when he says, I didn't have a nightmare. Yeah. Well, exactly. And, that's, and that is classic deflection. Right. And that is what Bucky does throughout the entire thing. I know there are, there are people that are, that, are, that are mad at his therapist. I'm telling you right now, that therapist was spot on. You have a deflecting, obstinate client. You don't handle them with kid gloves. You've mm-hmm. got to be direct with them. You got to, you know, you got to throw the ashtray at them and say you're not a freaking dog. And and <laughs> and, and, and we weren't privy to all the other techniques, softer techniques that she may have tried before yes. we got to this point. Exactly, exactly. And what I will say is, you know, um, when it comes to that moment, it is a. Um, you know, when he takes that life, but when he wakes up for this is the thing that I love is we see him that he is sleeping on the floor, mm. which of course is a reference to Winter Soldier when that's what gave that bonding with Sam and Cap when he says, it's your bed, isn't it? You can't sleep on it because you're so used to sleeping on the fl- on, on a hard surface, you can't fall asleep. It's like, yeah, it's like a marshmallow. And here we see, here we see Bucky in his little Spartan apartment sleeping on the floor with a football game in the back. Now, we're, we're this red-blooded American. That, that's that Soviet influence. That's the Hydra influence. That now he's a soccer fan. Um, <laughs> he grew up in Brooklyn, man. Dodgers. It's, that's what he should be watching. I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm making a joke there. It's, <laughs> football fans of the world don't get mad at me. And you know what? He may have been watching the Dodgers fall asleep and then you know, you're watching ESPN. Eventually, it's gonna it's gonna turn to football because it is the most popular game in the world. So yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, he you know he wakes up um, and he's on the floor because he can't sleep in a bed. He can't he can't sleep comfortably because he is still out of it. Because as he says, the only time he ever had comfort was in Wakanda. He had a couple of, you know, I had a brief moment of peace when I was in Wakanda. And then they pull me back, you know, they pull me back into wars and they pull me back into fighting, you know. I was a fighter. I was a killer. I was a killer with my mind controlled. And then I finally got to have peace. And then someone says, oh, no, you don't get to have peace. You got to come back and fight. And there is this aspect of that. It's like, you know, what if what if Bucky really did just want to go home for a bit? What if he wants to retire? What if he's a little mad at Cap that, oh, oh, you're retiring now, huh? Okay, good for you. You ever think I want to retire? Can I have a quantum leaping thing go? It, it, seems like, it seems like that's what the therapist is suggesting that he does do, but he doesn't want to do that because he has some list that he needs to wipe off. Or, like, you know, it's like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. There we go. Yep. I. I, I yeah. Um, yes, he has a list because he has to make amends. Right. So and he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to chill. He doesn't want to well, relax. That's what the whole no, world is trying to convince no. him to do. He has to make amends, but how he makes amends is his choice. No, 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 no. That's again. That's again deflection. Thinking that you want to be this person that the world thinks you should be, this peaceful blah blah blah. But deep down inside, you recognize that you crave the fight just as much. You can't let it go just as much as uh, you know, um, as much as you'd want to. So unless it, the fight is the distraction for him, that that basic basically to put it into all these other terms, it's way easier to be an Avenger than to get a small business loan. That if you want to just adventure, you can go be an adventurer. You can go do these things. You can he can get the, you know, that government contract work. I'm sure. I'm sure the government is going to be more than happy to say, oh, you would like to do work for us? Come right along, you know? Yeah. And, and be a part of what we, what we have to 
do as far as thwarting evil or, you know, maybe not so evil, but you don't need to know that. Kind I guess maybe that's, across. maybe that's what's getting him down is that it is no longer yeah. possible for him to be comfortable in that space anymore, that he is, you know, malformed yeah. to a degree that cannot PTSD. be. He's got severe PTSD. He's got severe PTSD and he is resistant to therapy. That is really what it is. He is resi- he wants to he he doesn't want to admit that he needs help, that he needs friends, that he needs a support system. Mm-hmm. He wants to say I can do it on my own. I can just be my solitary lone wolf. And you know, his psychiatrist is saying no, you can't. Mm-hmm. Um it is interesting when he does go out on his date. And you know, and for what it's worth like the the de- you know, and again, this is this is one of these moments where I'm just like dealing with every, oh, you know, Marvel, they're so, they just make these light, airy, you know, jokey films. It's like, have you watched any of these things? Have you seen, you know, the, the, this man has befriended the father of an innocent he killed because he cannot figure out how do I make amends to this guy? And that's really what it is. It's like, you know what? I don't think I can make amends with this guy. I don't think there's a way for me to... There's also a measure of masochism in that. Like, he feels like he's flagellating himself uh, for his sins by constantly being around a reminder of, of, you know, what he was and and how terrible that was. Like, I I deserve to feel bad, so I'm going to be around this guy. So I constantly remind myself of how bad that was. Yeah, I get the feeling what he's trying to do is to say, well, I'll be his son. I'll show up. I'll make sure he's okay. I'll take, I'll make sure he's okay. I'll make sure that, you know, the way a son would, that, you know, and for what it's worth, he doesn't have a father. Interesting that he says he has a sister. And at first thought he said he says he has four sisters, but actually what he says is 4F. Because um, when he's on the date, with uh, the woman and they're playing Battleship. And he says, you know, and she says, do you have, you know, do you have any family? Says, you know, says, you know, do you have parents? No, they're dead. And he says, I have a sister. Then he says, 4F, which I thought he was saying four of them. I'm like third watching. He's like, oh, no, he says 4F. So I thought he said he had four sisters. Actually, he says one sister. But, you know, I'm sure we're going to find out that she married Mr. Jones and Mr. Jones that they had that somewhere on the line that's how we're going to get Rick Jones into this um, mm. and that's why they look exactly like uh, uh, Bucky Barnes it's just fun comic book lore about you know that this teenage sidekick always always looks like Bucky and there's like there's like uh, Jack Monroe who looks exactly like Bucky and then um, uh, Rick Jones who also as luck would have it looked exactly like Bucky so, hmm. just a weird thing in comics, though, what it, for what it's worth, people looking exactly like each other in comics is a real trope where they exploit it all the time. It was like, why? You look exactly alike. We just have to put a different wig on you. <laughs> and, um, yeah. It's crazy. Um, but, yeah, so he does have a sister, and I do want to see what if he ever looks up what happened to his family. Because he says his parents are dead. He doesn't say his sister is dead. But then again, it may also be that his sister has passed on, because it has been, as he says, 100 years. Um, He's 104. Oh. Uh, Right. But but, um, his sister might have had a family. So his sister might have lived, had a family, and, um, you know, lived a whole life. And now, usually in most stories, his parents are dead by the time he joins the army but you may also have this idea that yes he maybe his parents died before he because if his parents died before he joined the army then his parents that he was an orphan and so it's like when we get to that idea of like you know there's a word for um there's a word for a parent a child who lost their parents but not a word for a parent who lost their child you know that it's a very hard thing to understand and comprehend. And so, um, again, that feeds into that idea that maybe he wants to be this guy's, wants to sort of be as much as he can this guy's son. Um, 
which is hard, which is hard. And for what it's worth, he's probably at least somewhat close to a contemporary of him. You know, right. At first, the, the, it took me a while to, to, to put two and two together. I initially thought, oh, this is probably an old man that was friends with him or, you know, when he was younger. And, like, he's still the yes. same age. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's what they're doing. Well, there could, and for what it's worth, we haven't gotten all the reveals yet. It may be both. Fair that enough. this actually was his friend, that this was, you know, a guy he knew mm. from the war who's still alive, although then again, he'd probably also be in his hundreds. Um, and, yeah, you know, uh, I think he's not there yet. Yeah, I think he's actually only in his 80s because he actually, he makes a point that no one made, because he's reading the obituaries and he's like, man, no one made it, to the, made it to the 90s this week. You know? And they say, such a waste, you know? Which either means they're both really old or he's getting to, and he's like, he wants to make it to the 90s. He thinks, I got to make it at least to 90, right? Um, anyway, I do like the, I do love the date scene. There's going to be a lot of talk about the uh, the woman saying, I'm reading your mind. Because um, she's clearly uh, wap- wiping the floor with him. So mm. mutants confirmed, that's Psylocke. But, um, <laughs> huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it would be in, an interesting idea, but the idea that, um, you know, she's just really good at she's good at reading people and all that kind of stuff. But uh, or this is somebody keeping tabs on them because that's a very be intelligent again. service thing to do. Which you know what? Fun fact: I was having this whole conversation with people because you know the whole Steve and Agent Thirteen Sharon Carter thing. It's like Steve didn't even know who she was. But just oh, this person has a cute meat on his first day in the new apartment. Um, just as you know, because obviously, oh yeah, we put this, we put your ex girlfriend's niece across the hall from you because we thought you would, because they were trying to enmesh, see, make sure that he had a person that could keep tabs on and to. Arguably, as I always say, this is this goes to my Rick Jones conspiracy that basically they keep on creating these people who look exactly like Bucky Barnes expressly because they realize the best way to control a superhero is to control their sidekick because they will die for their sidekick and they will do whatever they need to do for their sidekick. So if you can control the sidekick, you can control the hero. Uh, and that's how this guy who just happens to all have the same face Keeps on showing up with the Hulk, with Captain America, with uh, Captain Marvel. You just move them all right next to him. Say, gee, Willikers, Captain Marvel, I'd be happy to wear those mega bands. <clears throat> it's it's just fun with Rick Jones. Um, hmm. But anyway, uh, so yeah, there so is. Who, who is this new Captain America? So that is John Walker. And he why did they him. pick the goofiest looking guy they could find? <laughs> he he um, does not look like he belongs in a Captain America suit. He's just like he just looks. I mean, not that he's, he's you know a strange looking, but he's, okay. So he's, so here's what I'm gonna say. Wyatt Russell, and this is Kurt Russell's son, ugh. and he looks a lot like Kurt Russell, but he's got a like a howdy doody Kurt Russell. Yes. You know? Well, he, this is why he usually has a beard, and he looks much better with a beard. Like that, that, that does not look like an inspiring figure, you know. He yeah. just looks, well, he looks like, they, like a bad cosplayer. I think they intentionally shot him to look like that. You know, I think they yeah. intentionally created this to make so. So John Walker, um, and to be fair, you if you look at a lot of shots of Wyatt Russell, he actually does. He actually does look the part. He, you know, you see him wear this beard short, shaved short. He actually. He looks like Kurt Russell, and you, you know Kurt Russell, the man. Yeah. Looks, the man's a living legend. Um, Snake Plissken, you know, um, and ego. Yeah, and ego. Yes, that that's old. Then that, even as old ego, he still he still looked the part, you know. Right. Um, you, you put old Kurt Russell in that suit, and I might have bought it a little bit more. As it stands, he just he just like you know, I just kept yeah. hearing a guffaw in my mind. <laughs> well, you yes. know that. And like I said, I think that was shot intentionally to maximize that effect. Well, man, yes. oh man, did they succeed. 
Yeah, well, and, you know, it's... And, and it, have they given this poor sap any serum, or is he just out there, like, you know, oh, pretending? Oh, no, 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 no. He's, he's juiced. He's juiced. It's just like just like the Flag Smasher. Man, the juice did nothing for his jaw. Well, you know, you don't have a lot of muscles in your jaw, you know? Yeah, I don't know. It's just a... Man, it's it, all it, bone, man. It's... Okay, yes, I will, you know, here's what I will say, you know, here's what I'm going to tell you, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of handsome guys don't have a lantern jaw. The lantern jaw is a very rare thing. Um, I was blessed with it, but you know, even you, handsome as you are. you're casting another Captain America, well, I mean, unless you're purposely trying to make him look like a dweeb, I don't know. Well, and again, it all depends on how you shoot him, because he is cut, he is ripped, and if they had shot him head on. They intentionally shot him upwards to right. which, which you, basically anytime you shoot up a guy's nose, it's usually meant to de-emph- it's meant to emphasize the weakness of his chin. Huh. And so I and and the idea like, like I said, okay, to 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 bring the racial politics into it, they oh, were boy. telegraphing to people he's a nice white boy. Gotcha. You know? Because he's going to tell you, if you had shot, if you had shot Anthony Mackie from the exact same angle, he's also going to look pretty dweeby in that mask. Right. Because the way they did the mask was pretty dweeby. Right. And and not to pull us off point, but I also, like, I loved the new Justice League. It was awesome. But one thing that really kept bugging me is, like, I'm sure they could have found a more flattering angle to shoot Batman. He looked like a chubby mess in most of those shots. Even though he was all big and bulky, but he just looked like a chubby bad thing. It just yeah, looked like yeah. a stocky, well, you know, I think they both congested. Them. What's funny? See, it's funny that you would say that because I was actually thinking how good his, how good Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne looked. Right, like, right. Was, Especially in the final scene, the the post credit scene where he he slimmed down and looked more like a normal person. I was like, man, that Batman would have been great. His 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 jawline yes. looked great. The angles of his cheekbones looked great. Like it would have looked great under the cow. But as it's as it as it is, he yeah. just looked like a like a. <laughs> Zack you know. Snyder did not want to do a um a Batman movie. He didn't want to do a Superman movie. He wanted to do a Cyborg movie. So Cyborg, I'm guessing. I've watched. I haven't finished the whole thing. I've only gotten through the first two parts. Um, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It is. It, oh. I have a. I have a. I can't just dedicate four hours of my life to watching a movie at this point in my life. Unfortunately, I would love to. I will probably try and finish it today and then do a rewatch and then maybe one oh. more. It, it know, gets even better. Like the second half. I'm sure it does. I'm awesome. actually pretty pleased with what I've seen. I mean, my biggest problems. Are a lot of fridge logic stuff. Um, I don't know why Darkseid's met at Steppenwolf because it looks like Darkseid was the one who screwed up the first invasion. Oh, I, I don't know. It, it, they said something about. Well, you'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I'll see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm only at two. I did. It's yeah. Uh, the, the opening scene, though, with with Diana with with Wonder Woman was amazing. Oh no, and those no, Wonder Woman was great. Well, my, those the sequences Wonder Woman were is so great. cool. Where she's Wonder like Woman super is, speeding yeah. it. Wonder Woman is great. Um, the Amazons, I was not a fan of. Really? The Amazon, I mean, it was dramatic, but I just felt like there was so much. Like, uh, I, I guess that, well, you did won't they, talk did about they this, not but, seem effectu- effective enough, or did you? Okay, did, so, and this is, well, this is a whole other thing I was talking about on, online earlier. So there's two views of the Amazons, hmm. which is the Spartan view and the Athenian view. And the Athenian view is what we got in the two Wonder Woman films. And the Spartan view, and again, Zack Snyder obviously loves the Spartans, is what we're getting here. And hmm. the Spartan view, except at the same time, I kind of feel like he's not committing to the Spartan view because when the queen is running with the mother box, so spoilers for this, she's helping people she knows are doomed. Because we see, oh no, all those Amazons that were still inside the temple, they're all dead now. You know, they're all dead. But she's still trying to help them for some reason when, no, no, your job is to get that out. You right. Get this out and get this, get away. You're, that's your job as a Spartan is to yeah, you shouldn't them. be. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't need to be convinced to do it. Is what exactly, you're saying? exactly, and so that was 
that was weird to me. And I, then, think, I think, yeah, no, I, I kind of see what you're saying, but maybe they were trying to illustrate the point to us so we don't question her decision by making that uh, other Amazon say, honor us, seal it. You know, so we understood that maybe it was yeah. a little bit of, you know, could have done I better. Mean, yeah, I get, I, get I, I get that a little bit, but it just, it made her seem a lot, like I said, I can see that, that. Is, that is the, here's what I'll say, that's the Athenian view which basically shows the weakness of it if you want to if you want to tell the Spartan view. And that's the thing. It's like I, I got the feeling that he wanted to do the Spartan view, hmm. but he um like I, I like I said to me it kind of felt like he hurt the Amazon the, the interpretation of the Amazons in it. But that's <laughs> but I've like I said I'm only I'm only two parts in it and I'm not even halfway through the show. Which is like weird to me. It's like, wait, it just said part two, part one, part two. There's part three and part four, so I'm guessing those get longer as they go. Yeah, yeah. Part five like, is, is where it really takes. Oh, off. there's a five parts. Uh, yeah. How many parts are there? I thought there was only six, four parts. Six. Oh, six parts. Okay, that yeah. makes a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought I only had two more parts to go. Okay, but no, six no, parts. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually think they really should have broken this up. I think it would have been great had they done it as six episodes. I mean, you, you're able to if you'd like to. I mean, that's how some no, people. No, no, I understand that, but I think if they had, if they had released it on a every Thursday, this is going to drop. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I really. Well, enjoyed I think it. they would have. I think they would have had the. Here's what I'm going to tell you: six weeks from now, no one's going to be talking about this. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And, and and some things you don't need it. It was a movie, and you're meant to like uh, to binge watch it. Anyway, certain things uh, are, are meant to be seen that way, and I'm happy for it. I mean, it would have been nice okay. to have like the elaboration and the blah, blah, blah in between. But like, man, it, I was engrossed the whole way. As soon as it ended, I was like, oh, I can't believe I get to oh, no, no. go right like into said, it. I am engrossed. I am engrossed. Yeah. If I could have watched this beginning to end, I absolutely would have so far. Because I'm like, oh, wow, wow. I was like actually shocked when yeah. the first – one ended. It didn't oh, drag okay. it at all for me. No, I was like two no. and a half hours I in mean, and I'm like, man, I'm so glad this isn't over yet. Yeah, no, I'm 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 intrigued by what he's doing. Um I just feel like again, I think I think he's got again, he's got great visuals. I never doubted his visuals. I know his visuals are Chef's Kiss. He is actually great. You know, anyone who's seen like I said, even if you hate Watchmen, you got to admit Watchmen is a beautiful film. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I I actually like Zack Snyder as a filmmaker. It's just as a storyteller that that I I you know, I worry about it. And again, it comes down to what is the inevitable comparison. I have 6 hours of my day to spend. Do I want to spend it watching Justice League or do I want to watch the Falcon Winter Soldier for the fourth time? And, you know, a lot of times I'm like, I kind of want to go back. Now, I'm a Marvel fan at my base, so there, I do have that prejudice. I'm not going to deny it. But going back to Falcon Winter Soldier for the fourth time, I'm seeing so much more. And I'm wanting so much more. Mm. And expressly because I can't go to the next one, I'm just going back and watching the same thing over and over, which is... Which is beneficial to the to the to the uh, to Disney that I just keep that because they don't have to spend any extra money that I watched it six times, you know. With Justice League, they're really not. They don't really have a plan for the future that this that depends on this. So this is that. This yeah. is it. This is like a a redo, a yeah. mulligan. And so they're just like, you know, they don't really have anything to build towards. So maybe well, they're like, except that well, obviously, obviously Zack Snyder is pushing for that. I He's, hope he does. I hope he does. I mean, I don't mind it if he does. I mean, I don't like, I don't like a lot of the choices that he's, what I've heard about the sequels. I don't like the choices he's made. I don't like the idea of Lois and, 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 and uh, Bruce together after Clark is back. Yeah, that I is, never that is... liked his Clark to start with. It was funny. There was someone was saying like, you know, what is you know what's a better version of this than the version that exists? Like someone was saying like this is a better bond. Like Man from Uncle is a better Bond than Bond. You know, kind kind of a, a, an idea. Um, and I basically we, we said, 
we don't know him very much as Clark. Well, we exactly. Know, I think that's, but that's, like that's... professional Clark, how he interacts with the world as an adult, what his yeah. job is like, is he good at his job or not? Because the, the, the sense you got from Christopher Reeve's Superman, well, you got a, a good deal of understanding of who Clark was and how he dealt with the world and how yes. he managed the image of Clark and, and that he was maybe a good journalist. Um, we, yeah. You don't really get and much I, of that side of him explored. So what I, what I get from, from Zack Snyder's view is he's very much into the last son of Krypton idea, you know, that, um, and the idea of the impossible loneliness of being the last son of Krypton. And I kind of felt like, you know, who actually did this better than Zack Snyder was Hancock. That Hancock is a better man of steel than man of steel because I actually, and again, now, Unpopular opinion. I liked Hancock. I did too. I thought it was a good movie. But I also thought that it really embraced the idea of like, what if you were the last of your kind and you were omnipotent, but you don't want to rule the world, you know? But everyone also says, well, you have all this power. Why don't you help people? And you do, right? On the regular. But at the same time, you're also like, you know what? It's only, it's only so much fun for you, you know? That yeah, that at, movie you know, it immediately made me think of Superman 3 when Superman turned, uh, you know, uh, yeah. bad or apathetic or whatever. Which, 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 again, is exactly, which is why that's my favorite, because it is where Superman has to deal with the two realities of, look, you know, yes, I could, I could do whatever I wanted. Hmm. But I actually have a moral center that says, don't just do what you want. Which is, you know, and this is like, here's the thing. Tomorrow I can go buy a gun, and I can do whatever I want for a period of time. And that is just human reality, and that's always been human reality. I could, when, when, I, when I was a caveman, I could pick up a rock, and I could violate every social contract I wanted with that rock for as long as I could, you know? And the idea is, is that the reality is, is that we as beings should not want to violate the social contract because the social contract actually is beneficial for us as well. And if you are, if you are Superman, obviously you can make the argument that the social contract isn't necessarily beneficial for him, except it is because he's still a social being and he wants to socialize and that's the thing it's like you know we don't we don't not kill and do whatever we want because we're afraid of punishment it's because we're afraid people don't won't won't, won't like us right because his planet is all gone the only surroundings that can give him a sense of identity is us exactly so that is where i think i think that essentially I think what Zach, what Zach wanted to do, and here's what I'll tell you, I think he wanted way more runway than they were going to give him. He's kind of the spruce goose of directors. It's like, yeah, he can fly for a short period of time, and he could get there if you give him enough runway. Mm. But, you know, that's not the genre. The genre is you're making films. You want to do that then you write War and Peace. You write a thousand-page book, and people will love it. I bet you Zack Snyder could write a 5,000-page book, and people would read the heck out of it. I'm sure it would be great and wonderful. And, you know, you would spend that whole time reading it, and it would be wonderful, but that's not the genre that he works in. And Maybe Somehow he got to do it, and it worked out anyways. It was great. Well, but it, I mean, I guess so. I, like I, said, I haven't finished it yet, and I'm sure it's good. You know, that I mean, that, that's always the thing. I never doubted it would be good. And, like I said, I didn't mind the first one that much, you know? Yeah. You, you rip on it, but you also rip on Thor The Dark World, and you rip on Age of Hulk. People rip on these films all the time because, you know... There's, there's a always, lot of silliness attached to it. There's yeah, a lot I mean, of silliness I, 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 I rip... Here I'll say, I'll rip on B, Batman vs. Superman a lot more than I rip on uh, Dawn of Justice. I right. really felt Dawn of Justice... You know, was and it? I, decent? I think that's the other thing. You're, it, it's impossible not to watch this movie and immediately be comparing it to the previous entry, and 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 all the little missteps that they were able to avoid, and how appreciative I was that they did. 
yeah. I mean, it's it's you get a lot more characters. It was what I said. You know, the most important thing for, and you know, this is of course our, our Batman Winter Soldier. Uh, uh, sorry, not our Batman. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is our this is our Falcon Winter Soldier story, and we're talking uh, Justice League. But Maz isn't coming to our big Justice League roundtable next week. Unfortunately, so this, I will not be able to. to you, this is my gift to you, Maz. You get to get your thoughts out now. So. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, but that's the thing. It's like, it is, I mean, it is a good story. It is a good film. But again, like I said, if I were to say, what would I rather watch? The Zack Snyder cut or Falcon Winter Soldier? I'm probably going to go with Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah, I'd probably go but, with the Snyder cut. You go with that? Well, that's fine. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, you know, I hear they're releasing uh, a black and white version uh, like they did with uh, Logan. Yeah, okay. I mean, that, that's oh, fine. He, you know, here's what I'm going to tell you about that. And I, I, wonder if, I wonder if they painted people blue for that. Well, that's the thing. They didn't. And they're just... <laughs> basically, it's not a black and white version. It's a color correct... It's a digitally color corrected black and white. And whether or not they're going to... It might be good. I, I, I'll watch here's it Here's what I'm going to tell you. Well, in, if they if they made the effort like they did on WandaVision to truly understand how black and white translates, if they just push the button, because literally there's a button you can push. No, no, but and, I mean, and, like, and it, the robot it, it, will t- make it black and white. Zack Snyder's strong suit is the visual aspect of this medium. I think he would, if he's doing this, there's an artistic uh, intention behind it. It's not simply a money yeah. grab or a marketing ploy or, a, you know. Well, and oh. again, well, it, it may be his intention, but does, just because, like I said, and this is what I will say, is like, because it's his intention doesn't mean that it is something that he's going to succeed at. With, with right, his. no, no, no. All, all, all I'm saying is that, that his intention is pure, that it's there, and that I'm willing to give it a shot. If if, okay. you know, if 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 the intention really is to do something artistic and of artistic merit, and I think and that's, that's where true. his head is at. So whether he fails or not, I mean, like if the intention is there, then I can view it from that lens, and I'm happy to do that. And that's fair enough. And that's fair enough. And you know, I I I'm glad he got I'm glad he got the shot. I'm glad that he gets to say how he thinks the story should look. Um, whether or not. It's the best story he could have told. I don't know. But what I will say is I'm far more excited about the next episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier than I am about whether or not we ever actually get a Justice League 2. Right, because there's a whole other world and a whole mess of other stories that depend on this that are intertwined with this. So there's exactly. a lot more reason to care, certainly. Yeah, and like I said, I I, I want to see Aquaman go for a boat, though. I w- go, I for, want go for a what? A boat loan. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's an SBA loan, it's, it's, but te- which is fun for me because it is a Futurama reference as well. That's because funny. Because Dr. Farns, Professor Farnsworth was the first person to invent a robot that could qualify for a boat loan. So, which is such a obscure thing, again, that they maybe didn't even intend, but just the idea of, you know, I guess it's a boat loan, and, well, that's a Futurama reference, which is not their intention, but it's certainly the intention in my head. Um, And and, and to your point earlier about Vision going for a boat loan would have probably went a different route. Yes. but Although, as I've also pointed out, you know, he could also just, you know, gift of the Magi cut off his pinky and say, there you go. There's like $8 right, million. Right, right, right. Here's your collateral. There. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, I'm made of vibranium. I'm literally worth a billion dollars or like like $8 billion, you know. So I will give you my left or, hand. Or essentially, here, here's the tip of my pinky as collateral. You can put it in your little safe deposit box, and when you're not looking, it'll phase in and out and come back to me, and you'll still think it's there. Well, <laughs> yeah, well exactly. And and for what it's worth, he can manipulate himself in that way. So right. he is the vision. He's awesome. But, yeah. um, oh, yeah, ah, I forgot to mention that, which was the biggest revelation from uh, Assembled was that none of what we think of the vision is actually practical effects prosthetics that mm. it's all cgi added which just shows the level of cgi which again i'm gonna say 
man in part two, that flashback of the final battle was really badly CGI'd. What are we talking about? Uh, Justice League, the, the, oh, not the last battle, the first battle. The first time Darkseid comes, there was a lot uh, of bad CGI there. There was a lot of bad CGI. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. You definitely got a sense that some of it did not have a chance to get fully completed and some of yeah. it was, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I remember Tristan looking at, and like he's, he kept on looking at Zeus and says, is that the guy from um, uh, 500? And I'm like, 300, yes. He does look like him, and that is Zeus. And you know, he did, and maybe that was an intentional throwback, but it also kind of yeah. Felt but like- also, 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 every guy from you know Williamsburg, Brooklyn, looks exactly the same. There's an aesthetic that people expect when you're a Spartan or when you're a Greek god, whatever. It, it'll they'll all look like that. Every I mean, yeah. like you know, <laughs> or they're all just technically clones of Bucky Barnes. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, <fair enough. laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Just to bring it all back to the show we're actually supposed to be talking about. Okay. So, Maz, any final thoughts on Falcon and Winter Soldier that you want to talk about this episode? Man, they presented that, the, like, that that dude's chin is just waiting to get clobbered. I can't wait till somebody smacks him in the chin. He has a punchable face. And I've oh, said that about this. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, I think they intentionally cast him. Mm-hmm. Although, here's what I will tell you. Because when I first saw him, when they announced it, he had this big red beard because he's, he's a ginger. Okay. And the thing is, is he looks so much like um, a character by the name of um, Dennis Duffy in the comics, who is D-Man. And he, is, he was Cap's partner at one point. And he has this habit of growing out his beard because he actually has a lot of mental health problems because of the augmentation program he went through. Okay. And so I wonder if they're going to, but he was also just this guy who was so much in love with Cap where he was like, oh yeah, Cap is like the best guy and I want to work with him and I want to be his, I want to be his best pal and his partner. And routinely, you know, but he actually has a very sad story in, in the Marvel universe. And I kind of think that they kind of said, well, what if rather that, what if we call him John Walker, but he's actually going to be done in stuffy. He's actually this guy who's just this real gung ho. I want to be a part of the superheroes, you know, but he's also just, you know, just not the best guy, but he's actually always well-meaning and always kind and good. And is that, you know, is that really, nerdy Captain America that you always, that, that you kind of think about with Cap, you know, that big blue Boy Scout kind of Cap. Mm. Um, mm. But that he's just being manipulated by other people, and maybe that's where we're going to get his redemption arc. I right. really think that that's something they're going with with that, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, oh, I did want to talk about this. The most interesting thing is if you, there is no post credit scene in this, but there is a lot going on in the final credits. There is a lot going on. There is what looks like a like a proto sword logo. They flash up at some point that looks like maybe it's like if sword was founded in the sixties or the fifties, and you know, or the eighties, as we said. Um, and but one of the thing there is a reference to the power broker where it says the Power Broker is watching, and the Power Broker is a character from the comics who actually created both John Walker and Dennis Duffy. So there is an interesting aspect there. Mm. But the real (laughs) interesting thing for me is there is a quick flash of a black person's face, half of his face, which people say looks like the actor who was rumored to play Isaiah Isaiah Bradley. But then again, it could also be um, Battlestar, who we might get later as the partner of John Walker, which would be cool if they bring in Battlestar. But um, it says, but it, and it's a handwritten note, which is, it says subject 445, I thought it said 45666, but I think it's 45606 or something like that. But it's just this idea that, oh, we might be going back to Palo Gordo, where the sample, the last sample of 
Steve Rogers blood and the super soldier serum was sent when they were trying to recreate the super soldier serum. And of course the red, white and uh, red, white and truth uh, series, which tells of this attempt to recreate this super soldier serum using African American soldiers against their will. And I do think we will get Narnam Zola in this before the end of it, Mm. because either in a flashback they're going to get Toby Hooper coming back as Arnim Zoller, working on that project as the guy who says, well, just use use whatever subjects you can find. I don't need to know where they come from. Hmm. I am Swiss. And um, <laughs> to be fair, you know, it is a Swiss bank they're robbing in Falcon Winter Soldier. So that to me is the biggest Easter egg is that we may be getting an Isaiah Bradley story in this of what the government did when they didn't have cap. And there's actually a really interesting door that can open there for what if later, which is what if cap had gone to Palo Gordo, which is what the general tells him to do. So you're going to Palo Gordo, with a bunch of scientists who are going to try and figure out how your super soldier serum works. And had they had him there, would they have needed to bring in these unwilling subjects and would they have been would he have accepted Arnim Zola there as a person to be a part of it there's a lot of things you can dissect if Cap goes to Palo Gordo and how the Palo Gordo experiments would have expanded from there that's a what if that's another series we're going to get on Disney Plus later and this isn't one of them but this is my pitch for it I think it would be a great story to explore Anyway, um, Maz, you know, people are listening to this on a podcast. They might be watching it on YouTube because Phil does put the live feed up on YouTube too with all of our, with all of our unfortunate comments that may happen that should have been cut, but don't. Um, but if people are listening to this as a podcast on their podcast streaming service, uh, service whether it's uh, Apple or uh, Stitcher or whatever, and hey, if you do do that, why don't you give us a review? Say that we we suck. I'd love it if you would say we suck, or maybe not that if you don't think we suck. You know, if you think we don't suck, then say that. You know, one or the other. Just pick a lane. You keep on listening. Maybe we don't suck, and maybe we say, hey, you know what? These guys do not suck. So do that in the review section of your podcast streaming service. But um, you may think we suck because you're using sub-quality headphones because you got them at the dollar store like I always do because I'm a cheap I'm, – I'm a cheapie. I'll be honest. I don't buy good headphones because, you know, I'm bad. I'm a bad person. You would not like me in personal life. And um, the fact of the matter is, is that if I had the sense God gave the end table, I would actually not just spend a dollar every week on more headphones. I would just go to tweakedaudio.com, use the coupon code SELKID upon checkout, and get high-quality headphones that will last years. But I don't do that because, you know, I'm a dummy. Um, likewise, I can use that same coupon code uh, SELKID. Uh, at checkout on huntingkiller.com, I could have these really awesome mysteries delivered to my home. If you like to piece together what's going on in the story, you can get these mysteries delivered to your home. You have, help Michelle Gray solve a cold case, and you don't even have a background of what happened in the comics to fall back on. You just have to say, here are the facts. How do I piece them together and solve them with your own hardworking brain? And that sounds cool. But if it doesn't sound cool to you and you want something a little more light, why don't you just go down to our show notes, click on the Amazon link, go to Amazon.com, buy literally anything in the world, have it delivered to your house, and it is going to cost you nothing to do it that way. Go down to our show notes and go. And uh, it's going to help out the show. And while you're there, check out Pod Life, the book, a book written by the Southgate Media Group community um, about podcasting. And you can get it both in a digital version that you can read on your phone, on your Kindle, on your computer, whatever your blue light choice is for reading. Uh, And you can also get a hard copy to keep for the fall of society, which uh, when society falls and you want to read about the history of podcasting, this will be a primary source and you will want it. It will be on the test. 
And in the meantime, uh, Maz Vimmer doesn't need this stuff and they want to talk to you about it, or how much they loved the Snyder Cut, or how much they loved Winter Soldier, or how much they hated Superman 3. And oh. then, we know they're, then we know they're crazy. How dare you? How dare they? Um, how can they reach you? Oh, they can email me with their silly opinions at mozmanzora at gmail.com or find me on Facebook uh, uh, under Moz Manzora. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And, of course, you can always write to me that old-fashioned email way to where I'm Moz and Paz once said at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And, of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet things when I have a time and a chance and an interest. Uh, I used to uh, live tweet uh, DuckTales, a woohoo, but that has ended now until the next Disney Afternoon Universe show rises, as the Justice League did. Um, mm. At Charlie Esser, that's C H A R L I E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Moz. All right. The ship has docked, the show is done. You may now go out and frolic in the sun and know when the day comes again. You can come back here with us and sail full stream ahead. <laughs>